What's going on guys? So off the back of a recent video then where I showed you a store that I scaled to £2,000 per day, um, I got a lot of questions off the back of that regarding the Facebook ad side of things, which prompted me to do this video. So in this one then, I'm going to be covering one of the easiest methods you can use to scale your store to over $1,000 per day, £1,000 per day, um, using Facebook ads. We're going to be looking at some real life Facebook ad examples. I've got this PDF to work through as well, which contains all the information and you can get your own copy of this. It's 100% free, won't cost you any money. Um, there will be a link to download it um, in the video description below. Just one final thing then before we start, if you do enjoy the video at some point, um, please make sure you hit that like button. I am uploading four times a week now as well, so for regular content, then please do make sure you subscribe. And finally, I do read every single comment, so if there is a question you want to ask me, just make sure you post it down below and I will get back to you. That being said then, thanks very much for tuning in and let's jump straight into today's video. So to kick it off, I wanna start with some basic requirements. Number one, you've gotta have your Facebook pixel installed correctly for a couple of reasons really. Number one, so you can get your custom audiences set up and number two, so your pixel can actually learn, can actually optimize and actually produce good results for you. Number two, you need enough cash. Unfortunately, when it comes to Facebook ads, then you do need money to make money. Um, a recommended amount is up to $500 per day and now that is the very max. I'm not saying it is gonna cost that, I'm just saying as the very maximum to make sure you're prepared adequately, then that is the number, the amount I recommend. Number three is you need enough cash to cash flow your business. This is an important part of any business can't cash flow it, you're gonna let customers down, it's gonna ruin your reputation and you run the risk of getting your ad account banned. So for example, then if you make $1,000 in sales in one single day and the percentage cost of goods sold, so for every $1,000 you make in sales, if it's gonna cost you 30% of that just to fulfill your orders, that's $300 per day just to fulfill your orders. That doesn't include any Facebook ad spend as well. Number four is you need one product with daily sales of approximately $200 plus. Now this is optional. If you're not quite there at this point, then I am actually gonna show you how to get that point as well in the video. And then the final one is a store conversion rate of 3% plus, i.e. a good store. Purely because when you're scaling, sometimes your conversion rate can take a hit. Um, so it helps to have a good store to make sure you're maximizing every opportunity, every visitor that comes to your store. Another important point that you need to understand is the types of traffic you can drive to your store. Essentially, it's a scale. You start at cold, which is the first encounter, the first time a customer sees your ad, and then the scale moves from left to right, essentially getting warmer and warmer as it moves along to the scale. And as it says here in brackets, the further to the right, the better your audience converts, i.e. the more times a customer sees your ad, the further along the scale they move. Now, this isn't just me saying it. There's been multiple studies on it. And just to give you an example then of what it is, um, I've got this piece of content here and the marketing rule of seven then states that prospect needs to hear the advertiser's message at least seven times before they'll take action to buy that product or service. Now, I'm not trying to say that unless your frequency score is at seven, nobody's gonna buy it, that's not the case. But what I am saying is that a lot of beginners will lose out on potential sales because they just focus on showing the ad to one customer only once. It then goes on to say today without a clearly defined marketing strategy to map out how you'll touch that prospect at least seven times, your odds of success are pretty slim. In fact, today you might need more than those seven times just to be heard above all the other clutter that's in people's news feeds or fields of vision. Now, if you think about this, when somebody's on their phone on an app and they see your ad, there's so many other apps on their phone that they might get a notification from, and there's so many different people that might potentially contact them. So if they're looking at your ad and then all of a sudden one of those comes in, then the chances are they're just gonna be forgetting about your ad. And as it says here then, in the PDF, this is where most people fail because they'll show their ad as an example to say 10,000 people, but they'll only show it to those 10,000 people once. What they'd be much better off doing is cutting that amount of people in half and showing it to them twice. And just to kind of illustrate this, I wanna show you this ad set. So I think it's this tab it is. So here's two pretty decent performing ad sets to be honest for me, um, averaging 2.15 ROAS. Um, both of them can perform at about 1.4 and still be profitable. But what I wanna show you then, just as an illustration is the frequency score, both of these are operating on above two. I can refresh the results as well so you know they're legit. Um, so what I'm trying to say then is that if your frequency score is less than two, then trust me, you're leaving money on the table and that might be where you've been failing all this time. Moving back to the PDF then, I just wanna share this kind of like mini side strategy. If 
you're somebody who's on a really tight budget, then what you can do is go super small with your ad sets, like 200K and under. Um, focus on, say, one or two, depending on how much money you've got to spend, and then get to the point where you can bring in 100 plus sales, because at that point, you'll be able to use that data to then scale into lookalike audiences and actual bigger audiences. The more purchases that you can push through an ad set, the more optimized it can become, and then the bigger audiences you can target, essentially. However, back into today's video. So the first traffic then that you can target is is cold traffic, it's new first time impressions, i.e. is going to be the least converting because if we go back to our scale, then essentially we were starting at the very beginning here. Some tips then to improve the results of your cold traffic and interest targeting ad sets is number one, flex targeting works best because it increases the quality of your audience. As an example then of what flex targeting is, if we take a look at this image here, essentially what you're doing is you're narrowing your audience every time you include another interest so for example then if you don't watch golf i could say tiger woods to you and you know who he is because he's mega famous you don't have to play golf as it says here in the legend at the above light green non-golfers this includes tiger woods if i was to then say phil mickelson then you may have heard of him because he's not as famous as Tiger Woods, but he's still pretty famous. So it's going to include those casual golfers. But then if I then go into and go even smaller and say Bubba Watson to you, if you don't play golf, the chances are you're not going to have a clue who he is. So to target him as an interest on Facebook, you're only going to be targeting those golf enthusiasts as it confirms here in the legend. And therefore, if you're targeting the enthusiasts, they're going to be the people who are interested in your product. Back to the tips then. And number two and three then are going to be focusing on social proof. Social proof is king when it comes to advertising on a social media platform. People like to follow people. It's a fact. So the first time they come across your or post if it has zero likes zero comments zero shares just no engagement whatsoever immediately it's not going to look as trustworthy as an ad as a post that does have that social proof so to increase your chances then to build up the social proof faster there's a couple of things you can do number one is run engagement campaigns to india places like that because you'll get really cheap engagements really fast number two is when you're running ads create a post i.e put a post on your facebook page get the post ID and then use that same post ID for all ads. That way it doesn't matter if somebody leaves a comment from audience number one, ad set one or ad set two or ad set seven, it's all going to be contributing to that one post, that one post ID and therefore it's going to build it faster. The next thing you can do as well which will help is run page likes campaigns. Now these are optional but think about it, if somebody comes onto your Facebook page and you've got zero likes, you're not going to come across as a well established business and therefore people aren't going to trust you as much. It's a fact, it's one 100% of fact. So if you've got the added budget, I definitely recommend it. You can achieve page likes for about 10 pence. So, so even if you can only dedicate say 50 pound to a page likes campaign, you can get 500 likes, which looks a lot better than zero. The optional, the final optional point then is to run at least, now this is as a minimum, two ad creatives per ad set. Because trust me, this is one thing that I've learned, especially in the last kind of 18 months, is that even if an, an ad creative is doing really well, you can test split test it against a different ad creative that will completely blow it out of the water and until you actually test a creative then there is no guaranteed way of knowing how it's going to perform so the more creatives you can test then the better so moving into the second part of the strategy is when we move into warm traffic so essentially these are people who are aware of your brand because they've seen your ad before but they haven't visited then. So they might have seen it and just scrolled past it. They might have engaged with it, but not actually clicked on the link and gone to your site. Now, these are really important steps. Please don't skip them. The whole cold traffic and warm traffic are essential because what they're gonna do is help us build to that final point where we're only tagged in hot traffic because that essentially is going to be the people who are going to be converting the highest the most and we're going to be the most profitable so not a lot of people are actually aware but you can actually create lookalike audiences based on what people have done in terms of engagement they don't necessarily have to perform an action like a view content or add to cart so just to give you an example then of the lookalike audiences you should be creating um, number one is the video views so start with the highest quality i.e the highest percentage which is 95 
25% and then work your way down. The other engagement options in which you can target are everybody who engaged with your page. So what you'll find then is when you're running in cold interest ads, a lot of people will go to your Facebook page to check you out, see what you're about, see if you're legit and see if they can trust you. So you can create a lookalike audience based on people who actually do that. And that way you're gonna be targeting other people that have actually shown an interest or are most like those people who have shown an interest in your ad because otherwise they wouldn't click on it to go to your page. The other engagements in which you can target are listed in this screenshot you can see in front of you. Now it's important you test every single one of these. It might seem quite extensive, it might seem silly, it might seem like it won't work, but trust me, at this stage, this is these lookalike audiences are gonna be based on people who have shown the tiniest bit of interest. And the tiniest bit of interest is better than no interest at all. So please don't ignore them because ultimately they're gonna help you get to the next stage, which is the hot traffic. Essentially the people who have previously visited and the highest converting. And by following these steps, then by starting with the cold traffic, then moving to the warm traffic when you can, and then ultimately getting onto the hot traffic, it's gonna be the most cost effective because essentially you're gonna be diversifying your budget to the traffic which is most likely to convert. So a couple of tips then for your hot traffic is, number one is run retargeting ads as soon as possible. As soon as you have enough people that have been on your store and haven't made a purchase, make sure you retarget them. And another mistake then I see people making is they don't include the existing customers. If somebody's already bought one product from you, trust me, it's a lot easier to get that person to buy a second product from you, providing you've given them good customer service and a quality product, obviously. So when it comes to targeting everybody else who has been on your store but hasn't made a purchase make sure you use the same creative so they actually recognize it if it's a completely different creative or even a completely different product they're not going to make the link and it's not going to constantly be imprinting your brand and your product into their mind in terms of your budget then start with five pounds per day let it run for three to five days look at your frequency score and then adjust accordingly so if your frequency score is less than two increase your budget to bring it up to kind of like around the three to five mark slightly depending on what the customer comments are. If your frequency score starts to get too high, starts to creep up, what you'll find is that you'll usually get annoyed customers commenting on your post. So if that does start to happen, then obviously just bring your budget um, down a bit until you find that sweet spot that seems to be working quite well. Moving on then, just to kind of cover the lookalike audiences in which you can use, just in case you've never seen them before. Um, it's basically anybody who's been to your site plus anybody who has performed an event or action. And essentially what an event is then is when a customer takes or when a visitor takes a certain action on your store for example clicking a button when they click the add to cart button that part of the pixel code is executed and that will register as an add to cart it will add them to the list and then you can target people and um, that have perform that certain action and then use those people to create your lookalike audience as well. So moving on to the summary of the strategy then just to make sure everything is crystal clear. If you're still with me at this point, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please do make sure you hit that like button and of course, please do subscribe. But just to run through the strategy then very quickly, start with cold traffic, but your aim ultimately then starting with that cold traffic is to start targeting people further to the right of the scale as soon as possible because it will convert higher. So essentially you're using that cold traffic traffic to get to warm traffic to then get to hot traffic so you can focus on the highest quality audience as possible. You do this then by starting with interest ad sets that build your custom audiences that you can then use to retarget and build your lookalikes. Each interest ad set budget must be a minimum of $10 per day in my opinion, just purely because within the Facebook ad community there is this $5 per day trend. So if you can go with a minimum of $10, you're gonna be outbidding all of those people that are only using $5 and that's gonna put you in good stead. It's gonna put you in a good image in terms of Facebook. Make sure you run your ad sets then for a minimum of three days. In my opinion, if you don't give them at least three days to optimize, you're not gonna give them a chance to settle in and perform at their best. If results then as a whole show promise, make sure you increase the budgets by 10 to 20% um, to increase the data that's coming in, increase the conversions and therefore build into that next stage even quicker. And another big mistake that I see beginners making is they'll monitor the ad sets over a daily period rather than as a whole. And what this can lead to then is I was speaking to somebody the other day and even though the ad set overall was pretty profitable because they were judging it on a daily basis. They had two bad days and then they decided to just switch it off. In the beginning, fluctuations are completely normal. So to avoid 
that potential to avoid you potentially switching off an ad set that can go on to produce really good results. Just make sure you monitor the results over the course since the last change, not based on a daily basis. When you hit 100 people then in any custom audience, at that point you can start to test and experiment and actually create your lookalike audiences and move into that next stage of the strategy. Final point then, just make sure you're running retargeting ads as soon as possible. From my experience, it's the cheapest purchases you'll ever achieve on Facebook. Now the final points then, if sales start to drop, make sure you check your frequency score. If it's over five, then it's time to change the creative. You need to stop showing people the same thing. If they're not converting after seeing it that many times, you may need to change up the creative that may gather their interest again. If it's under, it could be due to inconsistencies. So allow it to run for longer and then monitor the results since the last edit. Finally, if you get to the point where you're consistently hitting over 1K per day, then basically the biggest difference between that and scaling to over 5K per day is the following things in the simplest terms. So bigger budgets, bigger audiences, more creatives, more countries, and back-end automations. Finally then, before you go, please do hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching. If you wanna follow me on Instagram, then please feel free to do so. And of course, if you're looking for a program, a course, um, please do check out mine. It's been producing some pretty Pretty awesome results for the students actually so if you are interested make sure you check out the links in the video description below and then finally guys thanks very much for watching appreciate all the support and i'll hopefully see you in the next one